It's time for Around the Ozark Sports Scene with Scott Perrier. Now here's your host, Scott Perrier. Hello, Ozarks. Welcome to the Around the Ozark Sports Scene podcast with Scott Perrier. Predictably, I am Scott Perrier and, and I want to thank you for tuning in. This is the maiden voyage of the podcast. Certainly appreciate the opportunity from the Midwest Family Group of Stations to do this and, and to continue on uh, my radio, podcast, sports career in, in this way. Uh, I'm really excited to do this and be able to talk to some of the uh, current newsmakers, past newsmakers in the sports world, uh, take some trips down memory lane with some of the uh, people you may remember, and talk to the, the hot topics in today's sports world, uh, including our uh, our first guest today, Jackson Cantwell, the Six foot eight, three hundred pound sophomore offensive lineman stand out at Nixa High School, who's being recruited basically by about every Division One Power Five football program in the country. So, looking forward to talking to Jackson. You may be wondering who the heck is this that I'm listening to through my speaker. Um, I've been in the Ozarks my entire life. I grew up in a small town called Knoll, Missouri. Went to McDonald County High School. And then went up the road to Springfield to what was then SMSU and now Missouri State University. Uh, graduated in 1985, stuck around for 20 years as a sports writer for the Springfield News Leader, sports columnist as well. Got to cover a couple Super Bowls, the, the Payne Stewart uh, golf career before his tragic uh, plane crash. Uh, high school sports, love high school sports and talking about it. And, and just really had an, a nice 20-year run. Uh, then moved on over to... Drury University, worked in athletics uh, for 11 years, uh, another great uh, period in my life with uh, uh, some awesome men's and women's basketball teams, a swimming and diving program, the start of baseball, and and uh, got to be there for all that uh, through about 2016. Uh, for the last 20 years or so, I've been doing radio. Um, I've done it on some other stations in town. Of course, I uh, spent an 11-year stint with Ned Reynolds, part of the stable of of talent here at Midwest Family as well, and enjoyed my time doing that and, and dabbled in some podcasts. But now we're going to uh, go full bore into the podcast world and bring you the guests uh, that hopefully you'll want to listen to. Our first guest here on the Around the Ozark Sports Scene podcast is a uh, phenomenon down in Nixa, Missouri. He's the sophomore offensive lineman for the Nixa Eagles, six foot eight, 300 pounds. Ranked the number one offensive lineman in the country in his 2026 recruiting class. Number one overall player in the state of Missouri for uh, his sophomore group. We welcome Jackson Cantwell. Hi, Jackson. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Doing great. Thanks. Uh, tell me what you had for dinner last night. Um, I had some steak and I uh, had some pizza I brought home from the uh, JV game. Steak and pizza. So, oh, yeah. so, so how big a steak are we talking? Uh, does mom uh, have to fix? Well, it's usually my dad. He's pretty good with those. And um, last night, I believe it was a uh, strip steak, if I remember correctly. Um, excuse the bell there. Uh, That's okay. Sorry, it was a uh, strip steak, about, uh, I think, 12 or 16 ounces. It was pretty good. Pretty solid. So if nobody were in the room watching and you had unlimited food quantities, what is the number one food that you would just completely devour? And how much of it would you devour in one setting? Um, sorry for all the distractions. I mean, being in school is a little bit uh, weird with the bell, but it's, um, there'd be around, uh, I'd say probably 30, 36 ounces I could probably take down in one sitting if I absolutely had to. 36 ounces of steak? Yeah, I think that's about right. Have you ever thought about going to that place in Amarillo, the the big Texan or whatever, and trying that, that 72 ounce steak? I mean, it's always come to mind to try to do something like that, but I just never really had an opportunity to do so. I mean, I feel like it, that's probably something maybe like, I don't know. Go on a vacation one time. Feel like I might give it a shot. <laughs> well, we wanted to start out with something like that because I'm, I'm amazed at the grocery bill that your parents must uh, accumulate each week, and I'm sure they are too. But uh, want to talk football and everything else with you. Of course, um, you know, started last year as a freshman at Nixa High School. Um, have worked your way into uh, again uh, one of the leaders on that offensive line, playing left tackle. Um, the the big news around Jackson Cantwell is uh, whose attention he's caught so far. Uh, basically, every Power Five team in the country that you can name, the Blue Blood programs like Bama, Georgia, Oklahoma, uh, Texas A and M, Miami, the U, Tennessee. They, they've all wanted to get a piece of Jackson Cantwell early on, or at least get his attention to get him to uh, maybe get on campus 
for an unofficial visit, check out things, and then start lining them up whenever he can actually take visits uh, his junior year. But, Jackson, overall, how would you describe the process uh, to this point? And, and are you are you at all overwhelmed by what's happened here at, at age 15? Oh, I mean, it's been, um, it's been great so far. I mean, I've just been trying to experience a little bit of everything, try to go as many places I can go, see as much stuff as I can see. And, I mean, it's gotten a little bit hectic at some points in the year whenever, like, recruiting cousins back up and people come down to see me or whenever a lot more people try to contact me, which is usually out of season. Right now, it's a little bit calmer. People are more focused on winning games. But I'm still getting – I still got to talk to a few people to get game invites scheduled, so it's always a little bit, uh, a little bit hectic doing that. But um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been great. How do you and mom and dad decide uh, what unofficial visits and games you're, you're going to go to uh, this fall? I mean, I know you were at Mizzou this past weekend for, for their uh, game with LSU, and I know you've been to, to Oklahoma and you've been to Arkansas. Do you guys just kind of look a, ahead maybe two, three weeks and say, hey, we can get there? Um, yeah, usually. It's pretty tough most, most often times because I don't know how some people take visits every single weekend. I know for me, like, we have a hard time going pretty much anywhere that we can't drive to. It's so hard to get plane tickets nowadays. But, um, yeah, basically, if we can get plane tickets in advance somewhere far, we can. Like, I have a few places where I'm kind of looking at buying those. And if not, then I can really – then I can drive to some places like Midwest-type schools, maybe like SEC, a few SEC, a few Big 12 places that are kind of within driving distance. So it's um, it's kind of tough to go to um, some places like that. But we, we figure it out. What is a typical visit like for you and and mom and dad? I, I mean, obviously they're they're courting you. They they want you to come back when it gets closer to to a decision time. But but right now, when you go to a, a Mizzou or an OU or an Arkansas, describe what what uh, the, the day and the in the atmosphere is like for you. Going to a place I've already been before is usually um, it's relatively chill in comparison if you're going for the first time. I'd say for. Um, most of those kind of show up. They usually have some food there. You kind of eat that and talk to either some uh, some of the coaches that are already up there, some other um, recruits, some commits and stuff. Um, usually they'll bring you back to talk to the head coach for a little bit before the game. Um, that's always pretty fun. Uh, or even go to, like, the coach's locker room, done that once or twice. It's, um, yeah, you get to meet, you meet and talk to a lot of people and just make sure I give you a little bit of a recruiting pitch usually. It's, it's pretty fun. That's usually a pretty good way to spend Saturday. And food, you said food. Uh, is it unlimited, or are you on kind of a food budget when you're there? Are they are they watching you? I mean, the, it's usually the NCAA bare minimum price, like five or ten bucks, and um, you can take however much you want. Usually, so I mean, if it's like if it's something good, I know in Oklahoma they had um, personal pizzas there. Are you better to a couple of those? Was, <laughs> okay. um, those who who know of you know that you are the state uh, high school shot put champion from this past year, second in the discus. Uh, Mom and dad, both Olympic shot putters. Uh, when you go on these visits, uh, is track and field brought up uh, on almost every one of them? Is it brought up by you or are the football staffs uh, automatically saying, hey, we're fine with you playing both sports? Nowadays, I mean, if I were really the staff or my parents, I don't really bring it up a whole lot because I'm not really visiting for track and specific. I'm usually, I mean, I still, I'm not, I, I think I'm going to do track and college. I'm not 100% sure, but I think most programs want me to do it with, want me to do it there as well. So um, it usually gets talked about. Usually it's a pretty good topic of conversation because not a lot of other people are um, doing track like that and also playing football. But there's usually a few. and Most schools have like one or two guys that come through to do it. So it's always fun to talk about those people. We live in a different world now with, with the transfer portal and, and especially uh, the name image likeness uh, rules or, or um, rules we use that word uh, loosely. Does that come up in discussions now as a sophomore? Is that something you think that they will present to you? And, and I'm sure you don't bring it up because right now you're just kind of in that feeling out process for, for everything. But does it come up now? I mean, it's not really something that gets brought up very much. I mean, I know people like kind of talk about it a lot. I mean, even a few from my class talk about it. I haven't personally had it brought up to me once yet, so I'm not really – I'm not sure about the regulations or really anything about it right now. I'm just kind of waiting on that because I'm not sure what is – I'm not even really sure kind of what you can do or even really how the process works. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens there. I know your summer was busy with, with visits. Uh, you, you got down to Alabama. You got to Georgia, to Oklahoma again. Is there anybody in particular that you've just kind of been a little bit in awe of initially when you first met them? Um, I mean, there's obviously a lot of places where it's like, this is kind of cool that I'm here. I mean, 
at Bama, I mean, getting to meet Coach Saban after uh, camping there, that's always, I mean, that's something that most people like love to ask me about. That was pretty good. Um, meeting Coach Martin or us people at Georgia, that one was really cool. Um, I mean, there's a lot, honestly. There's basically every single school is kind of cool. It's like I'm talking to insert name here. It's, just, it's kind of it's crazy to think about, like, that two years ago, I didn't even know if I'd be playing football in high school just because I just didn't know at that point. Now I'm doing this. And, of course, uh, they, they can't talk to you, uh, contact you directly till what, uh, the summer of your junior year or after your, I guess, next summer? When is that date? Um, August 1st after uh, next summer. So it's not super far off, but it's uh, still a little bit away. So <clears throat> August 1st going into your junior year then, correct? Uh, going into your junior year when I can talk to you. Uh, so that'll be next as as crazy as it's been already, it, you know, I, I notice that every time I do a Google search, uh, there's a different recruiting service doing a Jackson Cantwell profile or or what do you think and things like that. Podcasts like this, I know you're getting hit from all sides. When that starts next August first, have you got a plan or who's going to filter a lot of the stuff that's coming your way? Uh, I mean, I've thought about a lot of things. I'm not. I don't have a hundred percent solution yet. As of right now, I'm just going to try to maintain uh, my phone the way it is and just kind of hope that it doesn't really get too bad. Um, if, if all else fails, I might just get, I don't even know. I might try to get a second number. But there's really a lot of ways I could – I might just try to talk to people, see how they've handled it, because I know a few people that have already gone through it. It sounds like it gets pretty hectic around, like, once that official recruitment starts opening up. So I'll just – I don't know. I'll, I'll keep looking at, like, what's the best way to handle it, and I'll see you in about a year. You got a guy there that's uh, the boss man at Knicks, uh, John Perry, who, who's had athletes uh, go to colleges for many, many years and be recruited. How big a help has Coach Perry been so far in the process, and, and how much will you lean on him for that kind of help, the, the filtering and, and making sure you can kind of live a normal life your, your last two years? Um, usually Coach Perry handles a lot of like my recruitment talk to people because I can't talk to anybody, but a lot of them will reach out through him. And he has a lot of connections to these places, so it's kind of um, – it's definitely something that's helping me a lot right now. I think he'll have a pretty big part in kind of uh, helping me through this whole process, and he's done a pretty good job so far, so I don't see why I'd go away from it. Well, we mentioned you, you got into the starting lineup on varsity last year uh, really early due to some injuries. Kind of tell us the difference between Jackson Cantwell, the sophomore lineman, versus the freshman version people saw last year. Really just about everything. The only similarity is that I didn't really grow much uh, vertically, but – Everything else is the exact is the exact kind of uh, difference from where it was last year. I mean, I've gotten probably a little bit better at just about everything. Just cause I didn't really, I didn't know I was going to play last year, so I didn't really put a whole lot of effort into preparing. And I kind of got thrown in and learned a lot of stuff on the fly, so it was a little bit tougher. But I spent the whole off season working with um, trainers and stuff, and learning football and going to camps. But I came back to a completely different player this year. I feel that's kind of. From what I've heard, it's been a little bit added on film. And I've learned some stuff over the summer. Right now, today, how tall and how much do you weigh? Uh, I'm still about 6'8", but I weigh, um, I'd say anywhere from 296 to 300 on any given day. I usually round up because about it's usually about, um, yeah, about 300. Two years from now, when you're a senior leaving Nixa and going to the college level, what would you like to weigh at that point? Uh, I mean, that's. I get asked that question sometimes. It's kind of a tough answer. It really just depends on how well I can hold weight. I mean, I guess I'm just going to probably keep putting on weight until, like, it starts getting, like, it started getting sloppy once I got to around 305. So I got down to about 300, and it looks a little bit better. I'm just going to keep bulking up as long as I can not really get sloppy with it. So, I mean, I, I, my guess would be it would be around the 320, 330 range by the time I uh, end my senior year. That's probably about where I think I'm going to shoot for now, now, you get a lot of attention for that Knicks offensive line, and, and of course, rightfully so, given your your stature nationally. But uh, I've seen every Knicks a game uh, this year, and that offensive line as a whole is darn good. And I think it's one of the best ones uh, in the area in quite a while. Talk about the relationship with the other guys and, and as a team, as a unit, how you feel like you guys have played to this point. I think this is something that's kind of been building for a while. It didn't really kind of come out of nowhere. And I'm kind of glad I get to speak for those guys right now. Cause, I mean, we've been doing some great things so far. I mean, we got guys like Jacob Lyle, who he's kind of been leading it for a while. He didn't really get talked about much last year. But right now, I feel like he's probably the best guard, probably the best guard out of Southwest Missouri right now, uh, at least in the COC for sure. Um, and then, I'm, I mean, we got a bunch of other guys that are doing pretty good right now. I mean, Oakley, TJ, um, 
Ethan Show have all kind of settled into their roles. Um, we got a lot of guys that can block for sure. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure to play with all of them. A lot of football season left for the Eagles. Uh, unbeaten big game coming up uh, at Republic this week and backyard brawl with Ozark, and then we start moving into the districts and playoffs, but. Uh, after all that basketball season coming up, are you excited to get back on the hardwood for uh, Coach Blancet this winter? I um, mean, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty fun. I'm ready to get back in the gym and start working on some stuff. I've been a little bit wrapped up with football, but once the playoff starts, I'm mean, gonna try to get a little bit try to get a little bit of time every week uh, working on my touch. So whenever I come back, it's to be a, a little better transition. Now basketball, they let you touch the ball. I mean, you get it yourself on a rebound or or they feed you inside and, and a few dunks here and there. Have you ever had a desire to touch the, the football? I mean, have you ever said, hey, Coach Perry, can I try tight end or, or some kind of tackle eligible? Or And, and along those lines, um, defensive end, did you ever think about that or D-tackle? Uh, I mean, I feel for the first part, Coach Perry gets annoyed that every single day. I bring it up constantly. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's gotten a little bit tired of it. We've I mean, we've thought about it. But I don't think we really have anything in right now. So maybe just for later on in the future, maybe we'll put something in. Um, in defensive end, I mean, I asked about that too. I thought I was going to get an opportunity to play it, but then they ended up um, first practice summer just told me we're not going to do it this year. Um, we really still don't really remember why that was, but it's just not something I'm doing right now. I think eventually I want to come back and see some time at defensive end just because in our scheme I could probably play that position. Um, we got guys like um, Michael Henniger, um I kind of feel like I have a similar play style to whenever I was on defense beforehand. So I feel like I could probably still fit into that position for us. I don't think it would be that bad. So I'm kind of hoping I can get back to doing that later on. Where are we on the chase to uh, break Dad's um, weightlifting records? Um, I still want to – I'm still trying to shoot for it, but, I mean, it's, it's obviously going to be tough. I mean, I, I'm starting to figure out that guy was pretty strong whenever he was in his prime. Uh, it'd be very tough. All I'm saying is, I feel like I have a. I feel like he can never take away from the fact that I definitely got more athleticism than he does. But he'll probably have the weight room stuff for a while. And I'm sure you get asked this a lot, Jackson. But when do you want to have a final destination slash decision done, um, and where you can focus on finishing your your high school career and life? I feel like it's gonna have to be a little bit later on, just because. Um, I don't see how I'm going to be able to make a decision with next year. I don't know how people are doing it already, honestly. That kind of puzzles me a little bit. But, I mean, um, ideally I want to start kind of um, developing a top schools list by the time my uh, recruitment officially opens up so I'll know where I'm going to take the OVs to. And then after I take some of those that summer, I should be able to um, start kind of making a decision from there. It should be a little bit easier by that point. So I'm hoping it'll kind of all work itself out by then. Part of the legend of Jackson Cantwell is you made a 33 on your ACT as an eighth grader. Uh, any plans to take that again, and, and can you hit the 36 perfect score? Uh, I mean, I'm not 100% sure. I feel like if I um, end up studying for it a little bit over the summer, I might be able to, but honestly, they don't even require it for college anymore, so I'm not even, I, there's not a whole bunch of incentive to still do it. I might just end up doing it for fun at some point anyway, but it's not really... It's not the top of my priorities right now. I've got a lot more stuff going on, but I think eventually I might get back to it. If you were five foot eight and three hundred pounds and not a football and track star, uh, given your academic prowess, what kind of career do you think you'd be aiming for now? And what interests you after after athletics in the future? Um, I I've, I've always said I kind of want to do something in like um, mathematics or engineering, maybe um, something with chemistry. Like, Something, anything in the STEM field, pretty much, is kind of what I'm interested in. Um, I'm not really sure where that'll go. I'll, I'll, I got a couple of years to decide that, though. Whenever I get to college, so it should be um, should be something in there. Very good. Well, Jackson, we certainly appreciate your time and want to thank you for giving us one of the great stories to follow. Not just these past two years, but the next two years. It's going to be a lot of fun watching your recruitment process. And best of luck with it. Thank you for covering it. Uh, the pleasure's all mine. It's great you to betcha. Have time Jackson Cantwell here on the Around the Ozark Sports Scene. I want to thank him for taking time to visit with us. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, I've been around, like I said, for 40 years. I, I saw the Doriel Green Beckham recruitment. Uh, this thing is at least on that level, if not higher, because it's not always easy to find those left tackles out there. So we appreciate uh, Jackson's time and, and look forward to, uh, to following uh, his progress and his decision down the road. We're going to finish out the Around the Ozark sports scene with Scott's thoughts. It is just what I said it is. It's my thoughts on some of the 
happenings going on in the area and national sports scene, some ramblings. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about different topics uh, each week. Uh, this week, I want to start with the Kansas City Chiefs. And, of course, Sunday uh, afternoon, early evening, Chiefs fans had a collective gasp when uh, Travis Kelsey went down uh, with what looked like at first maybe a knee and turned out to be an ankle that they were able to tape up and get him back out there. But, of course, the, um, the oh, my gosh, what do we do now thoughts popped into uh, all Chiefs fans' minds and, and probably hearts at that point, too. But uh, Kelsey was able to get back out there and finish the game. If you haven't followed the Chiefs uh, or you've been living in a cave, uh, not the cave, but a cave, uh, he is Patrick Mahomes' uh, top weapon, his security blanket, his go-to in the red zone. But now the Chiefs need to figure out who the Robin is to Travis Kelsey's Batman because – you look at past Super Bowl teams, and you got to have more than one receiving threat. And the problem with the Chiefs uh, to this point is that they've had about four or five or six or maybe even seven guys that they've kind of rotated out there, nobody on a regular basis, trying to find that magic uh, combination of a, a good number two and number three in that uh, receiving core. Well, it's time to get this figured out. And I think the past two weeks they've seen that glimpse in uh, Rashi Rice, the, the rookie out of SMU, Touchdowns the last two games, his size brings a, a different element in the red zone to where teams can't focus on Kelsey the whole time. Uh, and then also the ultra-athletic Justin Ross, a kid that's had injury troubles over his career, but immensely talented, good size, uh, maybe a little case of the drops uh, from time to time. And then the third one I think they need to take a longer look at is Justin Watson, who has long been a Mahomes uh, personal favorite. Averaging more than 22 yards per catch right now, but very limited uh, snaps on the field, just like Ross and, and and also Rice. So I think it's time to give those three guys a longer look. You know, Kadarius Tony. I don't know if you can count on him, uh, either from a health standpoint or just really knowing where he is uh, mentally on the field at all times there as well. Sky Moore, just not getting it done. Um, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, a veteran, just a piece and parts. These guys have been commanding, um, in large part, more than 50% of the snaps. It's time for some of those snaps to go to the younger guys, and let's see what they can do. Uh, one other Scott's thoughts. Uh, there should be no panic setting in over Missouri State's 1-4 and four start to the football season under their new coach, uh, first-year coach Ryan Beard. Beard is the son-in-law, of course, of Bobby Petrino, who um, took the Bears uh, – to uh, a couple of uh, blips on the radar there, including the, the playoff run uh, a couple of years ago. But the one thing we all have to keep in mind here is that Missouri State plays in the nation's toughest FCS conference in the Valley. Um, you could compare this to what Mizzou and Arkansas and probably Kentucky and Mississippi State and others have to face every year in their quest in the Southeastern Conference. The Valley is that conference in FCS. Missouri State is that level of team. So for anybody to be up in arms over a one and four start, patience, because it's going to take time. And it may be just like Petrino's uh, effort two years ago. The fact that he may rise up uh, every once in a while, but for the most part, it's going to be tough because of those tradition rich teams that the Bears have to face uh, week in, week out in the Valley Conference. That's going to do it for Around the Ozark Sports Scene this week. I'm Scott Purrier. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.